Hello guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to make this kind of chart. We call this a conditional chart or simply a chart that uses conditional formatting in order to apply some color to its uh, data series. Now, this is a feature that you can actually find in Power BI automatically, but in Excel, having an automatic conditional formatting chart doesn't exist. So you have to do this manually. Now, one thing to remember in Excel is that when you have your data that you will convert into a table, and that table or range of cells has one column of numbers, it means that when you insert a chart, it will have only one color. Now, you can always do this manually, like just right-click on a specific data point by clicking on a data point twice. Because if you click on the first time, that means you're selecting all of them. Clicking it another time would isolate that specific data point, and you could change the fill color manually okay, by yourself by right click and then change the fill color. But this is not automatic. And if the value here under column B changes, then that bar retains its red color, even if it's supposed to turn green. Now, in order to do this, we have to create three columns because remember, one column of numbers will generate one color in the data series of the chart. So the three columns that you would need here would be the three columns that you would need for the conditional chart that you have. So that would be, in this scenario, we have low, the one that should turn red, the mid, the one that should turn yellow, and the high, which is the one that will turn green. Now you have to use a formula in order to extract the numbers out of column B and segregate them or designate them to their respective columns. So let's assume that any value that is less than 12,000 should turn red in our chart. So we need to extract the values that are less than 12,000. So with that, we can use a very simple function if. If the cell B2 is less than 12,000, then we want that number to be here at this cell. Otherwise, we don't want that number. We will put zero. So this is basic if statement. If you want to know more about this, I will put a link in the description in order for you to study how this function works. But in essence, it's a logical statement which is answerable by true or false, followed by what will Excel show if the value is true and what will Excel show if the value is false. So because of this conditional statement that we have, we will be able to extract those that are less than 12,000 under this column and zero out those that are not. We have to do the same with high. So if B2, let's say, is greater than 14,000, for example, then we want that number to be in this cell. Otherwise, we zero it out. So it's the reverse of the less than equation. We have the greater than 14,000, for example, we got the cell and then zero. And then we drag this downwards. Now the mid is done a little differently. We want to get those that are 12,000 to 14,000. So that means cell B2 has to satisfy two conditions, and that is by use of the end function. Again, if you want to know more about the end function, I will leave a link in the description below. Now, the end function combines logical statements. Okay, that's it in an overview. So, the two logical statements that I need here would be if B2 is greater than or equal to 12,000. Remember, that's our point that where we extracted the low amounts. So now we're getting the mid amounts. So if B2 is greater than or equal to 12,000, and if that same cell B2 is less than or equal to our high point, which is 14,000. So this logical statement here means that we are requiring B2 to be greater than 12,000 
and at the same time 14,000. In effect, it's a range of numbers from 12,000 to 14,000. We want that cell, if that cell follows these two conditions, otherwise we also want to zero it out. Take note that among these three columns, you should not be putting a null, okay, because that will result into a wrong chart. It has to be zero. And then close. Then drag or double click the fill handle in order to get the other cells as well. So now we manage to segregate the values of column B into three columns. If you remember what I mentioned, this would imply that this would be a tricolor chart. So let's do that chart now. So we highlight the data series, which, which would be the names in this case, A1 to A10. And then you have to skip column B and hit control so that you can highlight column C1 to E10 separately. We should not be including the column B anymore because the values of column B are already segregated into these three columns. Next, we insert. This time, we also insert a column chart. And compared to our um, chart a while ago, this has three colors because we have three columns in our data. And the next thing now is we have to align our chart based on this traditional red, yellow, green color. So for the one on the left, the blue bars here, the low amounts, as you could see in the legend, we will right-click them and choose the red fill color. So both of them should update. Next, we click the middle ones. And take note, you should not be clicking it twice because that means you're isolating that specific bar only. We want all of them. So we want to right-click on all of them and then choose yellow, for example. And finally, we have the last set of bars. We will right-click. And then change the fill color to green. Now we want to improve the way our chart looks like. They're a little thin for a bar chart. So for that, we have to right click on the bar or any bar, and then we have to choose format data series. Another way to make this pane show up is simply by double clicking on any one of the bars, and that should also pull up the format data series but take note if you do that you will get uh, the data point instead so just click outside and click okay and you will get the same options as the right click format data series method now once you have this pane you will have to look for this tab here the series options okay not the fill in line which is more concerned with the color not the effects okay but rather this one okay the series options then here you will see overlap so the overlap is currently negative which is what what you will get by default you have to put it to a high number maybe even a hundred percent this will ensure that your bars are aligned or the spaces in between them the gap are all the same. You notice a while ago when it was in the negative uh, slider, you will notice some differences regarding the distance between some of the bars, especially when the color changes. So we need to make that 100% so that they sort of like overlap each other. And then we have the gap width, which we have to lower down because this option here, this slider here, controls the space in between the bars. So the lower your gap is, the thicker your bars will become because the chart doesn't have any choice. It has to fill in that gap that you're trying to decrease. So the, it's the bars that will fill them up. So drag them to the left until you get a number that you decide, just, but don't put zero because that would put the bars right beside each other. They will not look like bar chart anymore. So let's put some gap in between. And there you have it. You now have your tricolor chart, which is automatic because if, for example, if I change here for this one, I have your Jillian Mitchells, currently 12,309, currently a yellow bar in our chart. 
if I change Jillian to 11,600, for example, so she would now fall or he or she would now fall to the red bar, enter. And you will notice that the chart updated to show a red bar for Jillian Mitchells. Now, if you're wondering what you should be doing here on this uh, data, unfortunately, you cannot hide them because that means you will also be hiding the bars. You Well, worse if you delete those uh, columns. You cannot hide them. You cannot delete them. So the best option is either you copy the chart into another worksheet so that you don't see this mechanism here or sort of like hide it by changing the font into white. Sometimes the solution is quite tricky and sort of like um, easy as that. Okay, so now whoever views your chart will not see what's going on in your chart. Okay, what he or she doesn't know is that there are helper columns here and it's the helper columns that are actually plotted in your chart. And now you have a chart that automatically updates depending on the value of its bar, something that Excel doesn't support yet. So I hope you learned something in this video. And again, I'm inviting you to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and notification so that you get notified for new videos that we upload. It really helps our page. For now, that's it. I will see you in the next video.